All right, we've talked a lot about uh, pragmatic philosophical theory. Uh, to uh, make things a little bit more concrete, I want to tell you a story, uh, a story I'm pretty proud of. Uh, so I think it nicely captures uh, a lot of the pragmatic themes in, in allegorical form, and so we can, uh, we can sort through the, uh, the, the truth or not of these kinds of claims here. What I want to imagine, or ask you to rather to imagine, is that one night you go to sleep, uh, and then unbeknownst to you while you are sleeping, a team of guys that I have hired uh, breaks into your home very silently and they chloroform you while you are sleeping. And then they uh, take you out to the airport and put you on a plane that I have chartered and they fly you out to the middle of some ocean somewhere. And what they then do is they put you in a submarine. Uh, they then leave the submarine. The submarine has already been uh, set up the way I wanted it to be set up. Uh, seal the doors so that it can only be opened from the outside and then they fly back home, uh, a job well done, and they collect their checks. Now you wake up after a certain amount of time to find yourself in unfamiliar surroundings and uh, naturally you're wondering what's going on. Uh, so you look around, uh, obviously you are subject to a certain amount of anxiety. It seems like you are in a submarine, uh, and indeed you are in a submarine. But then when you're looking around, you see that there's a note that, uh, that's been left for you. And because I'm a kind person, I've uh, left some instructions for you and some information for you to go on. So you open the note and you read the note, and it has information uh, like the following. You are on a submarine in the middle of some ocean somewhere. Uh, actually, it might not be the middle of some ocean. You're just out in the ocean somewhere, very far from land. Uh, the air circulation system works just fine. You have plenty of air reservoirs. Uh, there's also plenty of food in tins and other, and other forms uh, that, so that you will not run out of food for many months should that be necessary. You also have uh, plenty of water, uh, uh, so you won't run out of that. Don't worry about that. Also, the boats, uh, the submarines, rather, motors are working just fine. The navigation system is uh, also working just fine, so you have a compass, the steering and so forth are, are accurate. However, I do tell you, you do have a periscope, but the periscope is slightly cracked and slightly fogged, so it's uh, kind of sort of working, but not working very well. And also the sonar, I had installed a very ancient sonar system, uh, and so you do get some useful signals there, but you're also getting a lot of static uh, uh, when you're trying to listen to the sonar system. All right, I've also left you a uh, notebook and some pens and, uh, and pencils uh, so you can keep records or, or uh, write a diary, whatever you feel like at this particular point. Okay, end of my letter to you. Question, what happens next right, in this story? Well, as you take stock of your situation, one thing that is not going to happen is that you're going to get knowledge. Right? It's not the case that God is going to visit you and reveal to you some truths about where you are and what you need to do in order to get back to uh, wherever it is that you want to go. Uh, you don't have anybody else on the submarine with you uh, whom you can rely on to have knowledge of how to work a submarine or of any sort of, uh, of navigational issues. You are on your own and you are in a state of ignorance here. Also, I've not left you any maps, so you can't rely on pre-existing scientific cartography and the wisdom and experience uh, as collected in maps of, of other people. Instead, you are, uh, again, on your own in a relative uh, state of ignorance. Now, you do have two sources of, uh, of information about the outside world. You do have the periscope, rather, and you do have the sonar uh, as well. But again, in those cases, those are partly disabled or they're only partly functional, and so the quality of the information that you're getting from them is, uh, is unreliable. Okay, so part of this allegory or the story that I'm telling you here is constructed to focus this on some pragmatic epistemological themes, right, about knowledge. We've eliminated revelation, we've eliminated uh, uh, just having faith in some sort of a tradition or just trusting some other people. Uh, all you've got to go on is some uh, unreliable or only partially reliable sensory observations and you have no pre-existing knowledge about uh, how to deal with submarines in the middle of the ocean. All right, so I'm trying to model then the pragmatic epistemological predicament. So what do you 
what do you do next, right? Well, what the pragmatist is going to say, and I think what you would say fairly quickly is, it's pointless in this circumstance to try to seek more knowledge, to seek more information, to seek any sort of reliable or authoritative knowledge about the situation, my surroundings, right, and so forth. The knowledge just is not forthcoming. You are going to remain in a position of ignorance. So the only thing that can happen next is for you to try something, right? That is to do something, to see what works, and then see if it in fact does work, and then on the basis of that maybe try something different and so on. And that's the point. Starting from ignorance, not starting from a position of knowledge, we're first then going to have to act in this situation. So you go over to the, the, the controls, you figure out how to turn the submarine on, you figure out uh, how to work the, the, the steering controls, uh, you set the thing for, say, two knots. You, uh, if you're clever, will notice your compass heading. You'll make a note of it. I'm facing northeast right at this point here. I also uh, have a clock mounted there. Here is the time. I set the thing at two knots, and then off I go. So I try something. I do something. I have no clue whether it's going to work or not. But your submarine starts moving along in a northeasterly direction at two nautical miles per hour for a certain amount of time. Okay. Then you bang into something and your submarine comes to a stop. So you power down a little bit and you take stock of your situation. What did you bang into? Well, you don't know. There's no way to, to look. You look through the periscope. Uh, you don't get uh, uh, anything uh, because it gets relatively dark outside. And the sonar isn't really picking up anything distinctive. So you just banged into something. You might try to bang a little bit further forward, but uh, you're, you're, you're stuck if you try to go in that direction. So what happens next? Well, again, knowledge is not forthcoming. So you just, in a trial and error way, have to more or less randomly, I'll pick a different direction, right, in this particular case. I will now, instead of going northeast, I'll uh, turn so I'm facing in a more easterly direction, make note of the time, I'll maybe set it at three nautical miles right at this point here, and off I go. And suppose, make a long story short, you find yourself bopping around in the ocean for a while. Every once in a while, you go up to the surface. You see if, uh, if there's anything to see. You can sometimes see hazy blue. Sometimes you see what might be a cloud. Sometimes you see uh, uh, what, uh, what might be a ship right off in the distance, but you're not able to hail it. And then long story short, uh, go up to the surface, and you're pretty sure that what you see now is uh, uh, the Statue of Liberty. Uh, it certainly looks a lot like it, and uh, it turns out you are in fact in New York Harbor, and of course all of the New York Harbor authorities are converging on the submarine that suddenly appeared in the harbor. You're released from the submarine, you tell your story, and then uh, eventually you end up home and safe and sound in your own bed, right, once again.